Hello, my name is Ifediora Amobi. I'm the executive director at uh, the Anambra State Investment Promotion and Protection Agency, ANSIPA, in Oka, Anambra State. The Anambra State Investment Promotion and Protection Agency is the investment promotion arm of the state government. It was established in 2014 to promote market and handhold investors, both domestic and foreign, who have interests in Anambra State. We as the state provide an environment that will enable investors to come in, feel safe, feel secure, provide incentives and opportunities for investors to come in various areas, most especially the four pillars of the government, agriculture, uh, industrialization, trade and uh, commerce, and oil and gas. But that doesn't preclude that investors cannot come in and invest in such areas like housing and other parts of infrastructure. And we have uh, been able to attract uh, lots of investors in the past two years raising more than three to four billion US dollars in investments to date, of which 30% of them are already on ground um, uh, working. And so ANSIPA is what you would look at as the equivalent of the NIPC for Anambra State. has realized that uh, no country or region or even a state can survive on its own. And so ANSIPA in attracting investors into Anambra State also brings in the much needed financial capital into the state. And so ANSIPA's role in regional integration if, is such that if ANSIPA can be replicated in the five southeastern states or the equivalent of an ANSIPA for the southeast probably under the currently established and registered CENEC, the Southeast Economic Commission. If that can be established, then that could be a vehicle to bring in funding into the Southeast to help develop the Southeast and then to help finance projects, uh, especially in public-private partnership you know, uh, type arrangements uh, where the governments themselves don't have the cash but investors who have money can come in as long as the Southeast provides the environment that will enable them to uh, invest, grow, survive, and be free to operate their businesses.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Anambra State. Uh, what you have seen here are projects that we have commenced on a PPP basis. So this was up until June 30th last year. And so in the past eight months, we have progressed a lot uh, in most of these projects, and we'll talk a bit about that. We are going to showcase our own reforms, which are, which are PPP-based, public-private partnership-based. And I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so talking about how we were able to identify the problem, provide solutions, and then why we decided to use private-public partnership as a reform vehicle, our own specific PPP methodology, the results from our reforms, the lessons learned, and then our next steps and conclusions. Once upon a time, we realized that Anambra State, which had been a very, very vibrant state here in the southeast, was suddenly in trouble. For those of you who knew a little bit about the state, about 10, 15 years ago, this was a no-go area. Anambra was like a wild west. We even kidnapped governors. <laughs> we burned down secretaries. We had politicians who were powerful, who were even more powerful than politicians. But we said to ourselves, we have to take our state back. There are certain things we have to do and we must do. And so when the government started, His Excellency the Governor put together a team called the Anambra Economic Think Tank or ANET. ANET started working between the time the election results came out and when the governor was inaugurated to come up with a strategy to provide a baseline of what we would want to achieve from where we are taking off. So it became a takeoff point. We realized that Anambra's potentials were far below what we thought, and far above what was actually happening. So in other words, we were doing all the right things in Amara State, but we were doing them wrongly. And so, we found an, a state economy that was stagnant. We were not growing. We had high unemployment. We were not creating jobs. And our youth, left the state as soon as they graduated. Typical an Ambra state. And I always tell people that if your son or daughter graduates and says to you, Mama or Papa, I want to work in Onisha, it's almost like a curse. You want them to go out, go to Abuja, go to Lagos, go to Port Harcourt, even go abroad, go to the moon, but don't come anywhere around an Ambra state. So we had to change all that. If you notice also, this is what I was talking about. This was our growth. By the end of last year, we had hit 3.3 percent December 2016 growth rate, but still far below our potential of 5 percent, which the World Bank and other um, studies, even the National Economic Statistics, have actually estimated that our number has the potential grow 5% or even more. So we're still, we still hadn't gotten there yet. But one of the things that also woke us up was the fact that we performed woefully at the last, and even the one, and even the previous doing business subnational uh, ranking. Anambra finished at the bottom 5 percentile. And we said to ourselves, never again. So that was the problem. This is some of the examples of how long it takes to do some of the processes in Anambra State, and this is how long it takes to do in other states. And so we said, no, we had to reform. But then we also realized something, that this wasn't just an Anambra problem. It was a problem of the Southeast. If you look at this table, this is Anambra. 
The states in green are the, our sister states, all of you here in the southeast. The orange or yellow boxes are those who finish in the top five in these categories. Those in the blue boxes are those who finish between five and ten in the top ten. So any state that doesn't have any coloration did not perform. Anambra, like a boy, Abia, Edubu, Imu. So all of us here, we are doing the right things, but we're not doing them right. Lesson number one. So we said to ourselves, okay, what possible solutions do we have for this problem? First, we have to grow our state economy. Secondly, we have to put money in the pocket of the average citizen here in the number state. How we do that is stage two. We have to reverse the brain drain. We have to start telling our youth that there is potential. We can actually create wealth in the number state. You don't have to graduate and go out and live under a bridge in some other state just because you want to come home at the end of the year and feel like you have returned. And then we have to be able to walk the talk, what we call a woman. And that came from leadership. And those were the four things that we said are the ingredients for public private partnership. So we said to ourselves, okay, let us now use PPP as a vehicle for reform. First reason was because PPP cuts across. PPP is not just agriculture, it's not just housing, it's not just infrastructure. It cuts across. So if you if you have your PPP model right, then you can grow your own state economy or your regional economy in an integrated fashion. Everything falls into place at the same time. And so, what is PPP? It's an agreement between the government and the private sector. An agreement in which the private sector delivers the service so that the service delivery objectives of the government are aligned with the policy objectives of the private partners. What does that mean? Basically, that there must be an, there must be an agreement. Government cannot do it all. Government doesn't even have the financial muscle to provide some of the services, whether it's capital or uh, normal service delivery for the people. And so the government needs the private sector and we're able to do that. So within uh, an Ambra state and within ANSIPA, the Ambra State Investment Promotion and Protection Agency, which was established in 2014, we have a PPP desk. Our PPP desk is still not as mature as we want it to be, but at least it's something that we've started off with. And we are learning and growing by the day. We have a young team, a very, very vibrant team, that have drawn this PPP um, process. We're providing a framework that we use to attract investors into the state. We don't have a PPP law yet, and that's one of the things we're, we're working towards for the State House of Assembly to have the PPP established by law in an Ambra state. Next slide. And so, like I mentioned in the video, we have four pillars. Four areas which we have identified as growth areas or growth sectors in Ambra state. Agriculture, trade and commerce, industry, and oil and gas. And then to tie all of them together, we have a fixed pillar called logistics. Because we found out that without adequate logistics, all these things, all these other sectors will operate as silos. We need to be able to integrate it together. In the past administration, we had a needs, the Anambra State Integrated Development Strategy. Development was integrated, but we still needed to bring the logistics to now tie it all in and then drive it going forward. And so we decided and I agreed that we're going to go with the private public partnership framework. Why? Because it will address our infrastructural deficiencies. For those of you 
who are just visiting for the first time, or those of you who haven't been here in the past two years, you have seen some of the things, you know, the bridges, the, high, uh, the highways, the flyovers, etc., that have come up in the past two years. Most of them have been PPP driven. It solves the financing gap for most of our, cap of our capital projects. Yes, we don't have the money, but the private sector will bring the money, take equity. The important thing is that the service is delivered to the benefit of the people. It helps us diversify the state economy, as well as other things there. It's off balance sheet because the money is not coming from the state. And of course, there's some flexibility. Our reform process is driven by these following agencies, headed by the governor. The office of the governor has been a key pillar, a pivot, that drives our PPP process, basically because the governor believes in what ANSIPA is doing and gives his full approval and not for everything PPP. So ANSIPA coordinates, and then these other ministries and agencies play a key role in ensuring that projects that are PPP related are delivered. The various ministries here are very, very key you know, with that. So how do we do that? This is the process that we, we have developed and that we embark on. This is our own PPP model and methodology. You submit your proposal, it goes through various steps step by step, and we communicate this to every investor. They know the process. So you don't bring, bring a proposal today and expect to start work tomorrow. It must get uh, assessed, the years, it must go through the executive, executive uh, committee, it must uh, be approved, an SPV has to be set up, an MOU must be signed, and so on until the investment project is implemented. And even after that, we don't let the investor go. The last part of our PPP process is what we call an after, it's almost like an after sales strategy, you know. So the fact that you brought in your investment into an Amber State doesn't mean that tomorrow we'll just turn around and then let you face the bad weather. No, we handhold you. We make sure that as long as you are invested in the state, you are comfortable, you are safe, and your investment is secure. And that's the second P in ANSIPA, protection. So within ANSIPA, we run a one-stop shop, just like in IBC. And the one-stop shop, which exists only in an Anambra state, in, you know, within the southeast, is such that investors come in, and when they come in to work out, they don't have to go from one ministry to another. They don't have to go register their business at CSC, then go to FIRS, or go to uh, fill out tax forms, then head to NAVDAC to get a clearance, or come to Central Bank for their remittance. Within ANSIPA, there is a room that has multiple desks, and each desk is manned by an officer that is responsible for ensuring that investors get information that they require, and all, um, all their questions answered. And so we were able to go to Abuja, talk to the key agencies like you know, Corporate Affairs, uh, Central Bank, uh, FIRS, and the rest of them, and have them send somebody down to Oka or use their regional office within Oka that we can now uh, work with to ensure that the process is streamlined and easy. Now, what has all this resulted in? Ever since we started in 2014, we have been able to attract over 5.5 billion US dollars in investment. As at the time, <laughs> as at the time the video was made and some of our printed reports were done, we were hitting 3.5, 3.2, but now we've actually exceeded that because suddenly Investors, the good thing about, him, about doing investment right is that people go out and they tell others, oh, it's working for me in an Ambra state, come to an Ambra. And before you know it, you know, you're receiving hundreds of documents every week in, in proposals and ideas. So we've done that, of which about 70% of them have now been fully committed uh, and have uh, started work. In agriculture, which is one of our biggest agriculture 
accounts for about a quarter of our total investments. In the past two years, we've had over 100% yield. These are some of the ongoing investment uh, projects in agriculture, and uh, on Thursday, we're going to do a drive-by uh, tour of some of them, where you'll see the work going on. So it's not just papers that have been signed, they actually work going on, um, and so on. And because of PPP, we've been able to increase and also, you know, improve on our own made in, made in an Ambra product, including auto manufacturing. Now, Innocent did not start as a PPP, but we are now talking with him to see how he can now improve on what he already has, utilizing the PPP framework. You've seen some of our, our products there, understand the Anambra rice. So by the way, we have discounted our rice to 500 naira for the one kg bag. So help yourself. We have enough for everybody. We have our e-agriculture, which is actually an IT-based platform that the Ministry of Agriculture uses to track farmers, work directly with the um, outgrowers and be able to provide them information, siblings, and everything that they need to ensure that they are small, you know, produce a uh, very, very high yield. And so, what has uh, our PPP done? It has empowered the people. This is even a rice distributor, here, you know, with this big sign, Anambra Rice. And Anambra Rice is not a brand, it's actually a trademark. Because we have different millers and different producers of Anambra Rice and other products. We've also encouraged exports. You've heard about our vegetable exports, which is still ongoing. And a big part of the vegetable exports to Europe is for pharmaceuticals, not even for consumption. That is the big part of our market. And so some of the agreements that we have with the Europeans and the Americans is in the area of pharmaceuticals. So our Ugo, our Onubu, our Ariwe, our Nshuang that we eat and consume end up as pills and syringe and uh, medication that comes back to us. Mm -hmm. It all goes out through our breast. Poultry. Now you saw in the video when this was being put together, right? It has now been commissioned. It's each side of houses 85,000 birds, live birds, and produces eggs. And we have a target of producing one million eggs a week when it is fully operational. In terms of jobs, to date, we've created over 45,000 jobs through PPP alone. And that's the breakdown. <laughs> I'll spend just one minute on this particular picture. It's on sorghum. The interesting thing about sorghum is that historically, sorghum has been a grain that grows in the north and has always grown in the north. And so our breweries use sorghum to brew malt. Your whole Maltina, Maltex, Amsterdam, Malta, all of them all come from Sodom. Sodom has been grown in the northeast. However, during the Boko Haram crisis, a lot of the supply from there was cut off. So the brewers started importing Sodom. Until, let's go back. Until Dell Farms came up and said, let us do a test. And they tested the soil and set the growing sorghum in Anambra. Now, last year, this same sorghum product was shipped out to South Africa and the UK. And it was found out that Anambra sorghum had more, was even a higher quality than what they were even importing. And so, Sam Miller and Delphams are about to sign an agreement where Delphams will start supplying them 
with Sodom. And Delcams, of course, given the size of the land, cannot even meet the demand for Sagmir. And I've come back to Ansipa to say, give us more land, because we now have a market. We don't even have to send it to the ports. Between Delphams, Ibarriam, and South Middle Asia, you cut off all the tariffs, all the quotas, you cut off transportation, you cut off you know, foreign exchange uh, exposures, and so it's a big, big, big plus for the state in our reforms. Okay, I'll run through the next slides. Critical success factors. What are those things that have made it, made this particular reform successful? One, governor support. Like I said before, the belief and the partnership we have with His Excellency. Experience, the people within ANSIPA are some of the very, very high-flying stars, the people that I've actually worked with. And most of my staff are sitting there, and I give you guys a bow. Please give my hand a pause. The success of Land Acquisition Committee. Now, this Land Acquisition Committee is something that we also came up with, and the governor said, Alhambra is not a very, very large state, and we all know that we're actually the second smallest state after Lagos. And one of the big constraints we have is land. But we set up a land acquisition committee, and this committee goes around different communities in Alhambra State, and acquires land that the communities are willing to give up. A lot of the old, if you if you actually you know, remember the old land, you know, uh, Animoa and the Anku, all those ones that, you know, <laughs> yes, in the old days they say are no go areas. We are saying to them, listen, here is Naira. Look, tomorrow it will be a housing estate, and you and I will live there because we don't believe in those things anymore. So we've been able to do that, and we set up a land bank in Anambra State, and the land bank is warehouse the Ministry of Agriculture. And every time land is acquired, it's deposited into the land bank. And when an investor comes and says, I need land for agriculture or housing or industry, and we see land, we do what? We withdraw from the land bank. So at any given time, we have a balance. And if the commissioner were here, he would tell you how much land we have left in the land bank state. We don't issue guarantees. We're not like other states that attract investors and say we we'll guarantee you. Because a guarantee is nothing but a contingent liability. It's a loan. It's actually debt to the state. That's why over the years people say, ah, Anambra is debt free. We don't borrow. We want you to come in and invest in Anambra state based on your comfort level with the state. If you believe in us, bring your money. If you don't believe in us, go somewhere else. We're not going to guarantee your investment, but we'll give you a free hand to run and operate. Okay, some of the challenges that we face, politics, finance, because, like I said, we have a land constraint, we encourage our investors, especially those in housing, to start building vertical instead of, of a horizontal. Staff, we still have a bit of um, of, uh, of that within the civil service, we're trying as much as possible to boost in areas of training and so on. And then of course, that mismatch between what investors want and what the state actually wants. Sometimes it takes a while before we have a meeting of the mind. And so, what are those lessons that we've learned over time? We must and we always do due diligence. We've had people come in and say, oh, they are foreigners, they want to buy, or they want to build, and so on and so forth. And sometimes it's so attractive. You know, the press is there, the media is there, the cameras are there, and you go away and you sign off your life. But we always say, wait, we're not in a hurry. We will get to know you before we put pen to paper. We always look for the right people. And Anambra State is blessed with skills. Baseline, like I mentioned earlier on, we establish baselines for everything we do. There's always a starting point. We don't just, you know, take off. And of course, logistics. Um, you know, what are logistics like? Vehicles and so on, you know, and so on and so forth. In retrospect, 
The state would have had feasibility studies, business plans, EIAs, etc., for every project. But we inherited projects from, from administrations that did not do some of these things. And so we are trying to correct, spend a lot of time correcting some of those wrongs and making pro uh, process, uh, progress in that uh, regard. Um, planning, very, very crucial. You don't just start building a bridge because somebody says they have money to build a bridge. You have to look and say, is there water? Do people actually want to move from point A to point B? Or if I'm the local government chairman, or maybe the governor of this state, I go and build a university in my village. Meanwhile, nobody in my village has ever said to me, I'm interested in education. And so, for our sister states here, and some of the things we want you to take away, get the governor's buy-in. Always make sure that you have that buy-in at the top. Improve your business climate, which is what attracts investors. Investors don't come because you have a lot of land. They come because your investment climate or your business environment is conducive for them to come and operate. And then, always look for the right people. And so, all of this has actually impacted on His Excellency's vision and has made an umbrella what we are today. Going forward, and this is the last slide, for the future, we want to ensure that this reform initiatives are ongoing. I can stand here for the next two hours and tell you how I want it to be done. But we have elections coming up in November. And it's, you know, anything will happen. But we hope and we pray and we plead that the government is supported. For those of you here who are in the Anambra, and by the way, we don't call ourselves Anambrarians because there's no word like that. We are in the Anambra. So in the Anambra here present, we plead that you support the government to ensure that we carry this thing to a logical end. We want to make sure that our PPP law is passed at the House of Assembly and we're pushing for that. And then ensure that the PPP unit is well established, robust, and ready to go. And based on that, yes, we will now have a new type of state. Thank you very much. I gave him extra 10 minutes. <laughs> because I, I forgot to look at my watch. I was so absorbed. And those of you who know me in my other world, who realize.